Hey, I'm Brendan, and I'm going to talk today about creating Kubernetes build pipelines. Well, obviously, when you're talking about deploying a container to Kubernetes, you know you have two things. Over here, you have a container image. And over here, you have a Kubernetes cluster. What we're going to cover today really is how do you get uh, all the way from one to the other, and how do you connect the pieces together? In reality, actually, you don't even necessarily start with a container image. You actually start with source code. So you're going to have source code in a Git repository somewhere. Um, and you have your Kubernetes cluster over here. Uh, now, you're going to have a container registry. Probably that's up in the cloud, like the Azure Container Registry or whatever container registry you happen to be using. Um, what you're going to be thinking about is how do you control uh, access to pushing images into that registry, and how do you configure your cluster to uh, only pull images from that registry? So the first thing we'll talk about is how do I set up my Kubernetes cluster so that it only uh, uses images from the Azure Container Registry? Well, the right way to think about doing this is Kubernetes has something uh, that's called an admissions controller. And an admissions controller is basically a little piece of code that you can run that runs at, when every uh, request comes into the cluster. Um, to validate that request. And in this particular case, what we're going to validate is that the image field for any container starts with, you know, myregistry.acr.io. Right? So every image has to be this and then slash star. This ensures that only containers that are created and pushed into this Azure Container Registry can be executed on this Kubernetes cluster. That's great for image provenance, for security, uh, and ensuring you understand where all of the images in your cluster come from. Now, writing your own admissions controller is not too complicated, but it can be a little bit daunting. And so we've actually also created a Kubernetes policy controller which is an easy-to-use implementation of one of these admissions controllers that you can use to implement policies like this or many other sorts of compliance and other sorts of rules that you want to apply to every object that's created in your cluster. All right, so by using this admissions controller, we've ensured that only images from our repository are flowing into, uh, into Kubernetes. But what else do we need to do? Well, obviously, we've got a build pipeline. that's listening to our source control, um, and is going to build images. So it's going to turn this into the container image. Um, and now what we're going to think about is, well, who has the ACLs, who has the permissions to write into the uh, Azure Container Registry? Well, in reality, you want that key You want that key to only be present in your build pipeline. Nobody except for your build pipeline should have permissions to push containers into your registry. Remembering, of course, that we've restricted who can pull images in your cluster to this registry. So anyone who has keys to push images in effectively has permissions to run things inside of your cluster. Giving that privilege to your end developers doesn't really make sense because it enables them to run arbitrary containers, not just containers that you know have been through your build pipeline. So we'll take the key to your Azure Container Registry. We'll place it only in the build pipeline. That means that the build pipeline has the ability to push images into your registry, but nobody else does. Uh, likewise, when you're thinking about setting up the ACLs over here to create containers, to create pods, you also want those keys to be present uh, in your build environment and nowhere else. Because again, once that container image has been built, the only one you want to be actually creating new containers, creating new uh, applications in your uh, environment is that the build pipeline as well. It's applying the right testing. It's applying the right uh, uh, security scanning, image scanning, vulnerability scanning. And so there's a lot of privilege that you're actually applying to this build pipeline. So of course, you want to be very careful about the ACLs that 
you apply to the build pipeline. And in fact, a best practice is to ensure that everything has to be checked in in order to be pushed through the build pipeline. This ensures that things like code review and unit testing, which are part of what it means to merge code are always applied to the things that you build and push into the registry and deploy into your cluster. Um, likewise, inside of that build pipeline, it's really great to have a bunch of different compliance pieces. This includes things like vulnerability scanning for libraries that may have vulnerabilities, credential scanning for users who have placed database passwords, certificates, or other privileged information into the code. Um, as well as things like integration testing that ensure that you have a reliable application you're deploying out into your cluster. So ultimately, I hope this gives you a good picture about how you can uh, put together users up here via code review submitting code with no other permissions, building, pushing images through a pipeline all the way out to deploying your application to a production Kubernetes cluster.